Hello, BookTube. I have a couple of quick announcements for you, and I will uh, attempt to remember to leave all the pertinent links down below. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to bring to your attention or, re or revive in your attention, remind you of. First one is a BookTube event uh, that I don't, I don't want you to miss knowing about uh, called Storm Along 2020, <laughs> which is uh, a group of four BookTubers, fantastic discoveries on, on uh, I've just, I've had such, such fun going back into their catalog, not just for Stormalong, but for just for all the, all the stuff that they, that they read and enthuse about. But these four booktubers have made common cause to lay the groundwork for reading the fourth volume in Brandon Sanderson's Stormlight Archives when it comes out in November. So there are three books before then, and each one of them is grotesquely long. The minimum is a thousand pages. Uh, and we've seen that series, we've seen the Stormlight Archive on this channel just recently because the uh, publicist was very kind, kind enough to send me the whole thing uh, in these mass market paperbacks in preparation for the arrival of Rhythm of War, the fourth book, when it comes out in November. Very, very nice. I'm on the list for, uh, for an e-galley for Rhythm of War and an, an advanced copy and a finished copy. I'm hoping I get the whole, the whole nine yards. But... Uh, the reason that I wanted these earlier volumes was because uh, it's a lot, it's a lot of ground to cover. And although I've read them, I, I didn't read them, I didn't read them with the kind of maniacal attention to detail that I think I would need in order to get the most out of the fourth volume. Uh, and so I, I just got these and that's great. I already had another printed print copy of uh, The Way of Kings. Uh, and... As you can tell, I mean, even in these mass market paperbacks, which I'm going to have to reinforce, these will never last if I don't reinforce them. Uh, even in mass market paperback, you can tell these are enormous books. Absolutely enormous. That's almost a defining characteristic of this series. It would be strange, it would be noteworthy, if book number five in the Stormlight Archives were 250 pages long. That, it's, it's almost a characteristic of this series, that each individual book will be longer than The Lord of the Rings in toto. Uh, and that can be intimidating. Now, I, I am here to tell you that uh, these, these things are tremendously fun. They are, they are absolute classic uh, shaggy dog, world-building, gigantic, uh, gigantic stage epic fantasy. They're, they're just a classic example of that. Uh, I think in a lot of interesting ways, perhaps a lot more classic an example of that than any of the other fantasy novels that Brandon Sanderson or series that, he, that this author writes. I think he was going for something here. I'll be very interested to see what the what the communal impression of that something is. Uh, but my point is, it's worth doing. They they aren't just just doorstops for the point of being doorstops. It's a very entertaining series, uh, and the the four booktubers who have made common cause to demystify, to de intimidate this thing, are. <laughs> I believe they're what paleobiologists refer to as geekosauruses. <laughs> and and they, if you don't watch, if you watch their videos and you don't feel invited to dig into this series, either for the first time or in a reread, then you've got to check your pulse because you've got these, these, uh, well, they're waving around swords, book two. <laughs> That's how excited they are. And they have made a great approach to this, which is to, to give you time to get through these doorstops. So you, a, each book that they're doing is two months between June and November. So June and July is The Way of Kings, the first book, uh, and is is uh, approaching being underway. And then there will be uh, August and September, and then November, uh, October, and, uh, and, and then November. And then we'll be ready for the fourth book in the series. Uh, and I think that is a very wise thing, because that... Uh, that gives you a chance to absorb the absolute blizzard of world-building detail that Brandon Sanderson is working into every one of these books. Now, I've heard that word world-building used a lot in connection with this series, and I want to stress here that uh, although it is an outstanding characteristic of the Stormlight Archives, there's plenty of character here, plenty of plot twists, lots and lots of action. This is an, a, a, a science fiction a fantasy author who really knows how to do it all. So, again, I want to stress, this is a series that's worth your time, and even more, even more than it being worth your time is the community here, because these, these booktubers are putting their heart and soul uh, into, the, into this event, so it's a lot of fun. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun to wade your way through these massive things. So that's the, the, uh, the first 
uh, reminder, the first announcement that I want to give you is Storm Along 2020, the most ambitious read-along that BookTube is hosting in 2020, <laughs> to put it mildly, because it's 35,000 pages. Uh, and the other reminder that I wanted to give you, we're just, we're, we're jumping registers here completely, and they're not connected in any way. Uh, the other reminder that I want to give you is that I mentioned uh, that uh, there was a booktuber named Alex who did a, he had a, a booktube channel where he read the novels of Stephen King called Kingly Endeavors. And he moved on to a project that he is doing, an epic project, where he found one of those gigantic thousand movies to see before you die type books and decided to make a project out of watching and carefully annotating every one of those, of those movies, even knowing that it would take him years to do. And that has been a series of blog posts, it's been a series of Instagram posts, and it has been a podcast. And the podcast, as podcasts do, has wandered all over creation in terms of subject matter. It's not just about movies, and especially not just about that week's movie in the list, in the project. Uh, and Alex, for, for good or ill, <laughs> invited me to be a guest on one of his podcasts where we just talked. Not necessarily about movies, just about whatever, wherever the conversation took us. It was a ton of fun. It's always a great uh, realization when you realize that your conversation mate gets conversation, that you can actually talk back and forth. That, that's a lot of fun. So we did it again, and we made another podcast, and I made an announcement for it, and we have done it again. So there is another, there was a fresh episode, I think, podcast listeners call it that. I, the irony here is that although I'm, I'm a regular guest star now on the Thousand Moon Movie Project podcast, I don't listen to podcasts. I don't, never yet have I figured out how to do that. Where do podcast listeners find the time? I guess on commutes or while cooking or cleaning, something like that. I do precious little cooking. I do precious little cleaning and I don't commute. So whenever I have tried to listen to a podcast, several of you have been very nice to send me links to podcasts that certainly on paper sound great. But whenever I've tried to do it, I'm, I'm going, okay, uh, all right, I, I obviously can't listen to you jabbering about particle physics if I'm going to be reading, and I, so I, what am I supposed to do here? I'm just supposed to sit and listen to this? Uh, when there's reading to be done and writing to be done? And I always, I always veer into that instead. I always say, end up saying, well, I'd love to keep listening to you about, you know, uh, Edwardian government reform or the Byzantine era or, or, uh, particle physics or whatever, but I can't, I'd love to keep listening to you. This thing goes on for two hours or American government for Pete's sake. There are plenty of popular current affairs podcasts that I'm sure I would find fascinating, but I always get 10 minutes in and say, well, okay, but I'm not just going to sit here and listen to this. I have other things to do. And they preclude listening. I mean, one thing if you're if it's Baroque music playing over the speakers, but if it's if it's a complex talk that I in multiple voices that I need to listen to, then I can't do that. However, although I can't listen to podcasts, plenty of you do, and so I wanted to make an announcement that there's a new episode of a Thousand Movie uh, Project podcast starring yours truly, <laughs> where Alex once again tries to ride herd on the on the rant machine that is Steve. <laughs> so, so he just, he tees me up from time to time and we just, we are off to the races in terms of what we're going to talk about, where it's going to lead one thing to another. And then when the whole mess is over, <laughs> this whole big amorphous sprawling mess of hours, then Alex steps in with those, with those fantastic editing skills of his and somehow cuts it down to a usable size. And as many of you have noted, and those of you who haven't listened to the podcast will note it immediately, it's not just those editing skills. And it's not just that he manages to put up with having some weird combination of... One of you listened to the last one and said a weird combination of Harold Bloom and Christopher Hitchens. I'm not sure how I'm, to, I'm supposed to take that. Uh, but since I've had issues with both of them. But... Uh, it's not just that he manages to edit all of that and ride herd on it and somehow manage to bob along in that in that r rush of invective. Uh, it's also, as some of you noted, he's a natural for this kind of thing. Not just dealing with me, but talking on camera, talking on the radio. He has a voice for radio. He has a presence, an audio presence that I most certainly do not have. <laughs> And also that I get the impression from from emailing a lot of you on the subject of the Thousand Movie Project podcast that a lot of the podcasters that you listen to don't have that. Uh, one of you ra rather rather uh, openly betraying your age referred to Alex's dulcet tones. 
I agree. He has dulcet tones on a lot of podcasters don't. Uh, so I, I, I wanted to recommend it. And I, Alex has given me all of the links to all the different places where you can go to download this thing. And once again, I will add a tiny caveat. It's not much of one, but it's a tiny caveat, which is that uh, I'm shaping my content, the things I talk about and the way I talk about it, to the venue. And the venue in this case is a podcast that adults will download and listen to on their earpods not children, right? I'm not sure there's anything in this podcast or any other podcast that a, ch that a child couldn't hear. Uh, but nevertheless, I am, I am very intentionally aware of that on this channel. And I, I loosen that awareness just a bit on the podcast. So it will be, it'll be a little more free-ranging and maybe a little bit rougher around the edges. But I think that gives it a charm. <laughs> so, so there you go. There's two reminders. And of course, I'm the reminders are useless without the appropriate links, so I will remember to leave the links. I promise I will try to remember to leave the links to Storm Along 2020, which is a huge fantasy read-along of books that are so big that there's a chance they've sat on your shelves. There's, I mean, they're beautiful Michael Whelan covers, so you're, you're going to see them, right? When you saw them in bookstores, you're going to want them. Maybe you got them and thought, all right, I love epic fantasy. I love losing myself in a fantasy that's so big that I'm not shooting right through it, that I'm absorbed in the whole atmosphere of it. But those are so big and they're so intimidating that they've sort of sat on my shelves. If you're in that position, you're never going to have a better invitation than these four nerdosauruses, these four geekosauruses taking you through it one enthusiastic squee at a time. <laughs> Uh, and also there's, there's a new episode of the podcast. I'm just going to, I'm going to tell you about every new episode of the podcast because I would like Alex's podcast to be successful. I, of course, like him to have more subscribers, more downloads than he does. He puts a lot of work into it. More work with me than in a normal episode because he's got to dress up the, the, uh, me going full Grandpa Simpson into something presentable every single time. But I wanted to give you a reminder of both of those. So I will, I will leave links to everything down below. The, uh, the four booktube channels that are hosting Storm Along 2020 are well worth being in your subscription queue, even if you're not going to join 20, Storm Along 20. Even if you're not interested in the Stormlight Archives, you should still subscribe to these people because they're great. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Just a, a few quick reminders, and I will be back. Thank you, booktube.